Hello and welcome to High Flow Nasal Cannula. My name is David Woodruff. I am the editor of Critical Care Nursing Made Incredibly Easy. I hope to make this incredibly easy for you too. Let's talk a little bit about this idea of this high flow nasal cannula. Well, first of all, to understand why it's important that we're using a high flow nasal cannula, we need to look at our anatomy a little bit here. So when you look at the nasal pharynx and the oral pharynx here, you can see that there is this area that is kind of open and we call that a dead space. So air goes into this area in the nasal cavity and the back of the throat and the mouth, etc. And it kind of sits there. So it's not like every bit of air that you're inhaling is going directly into the lungs. Some of it is kind of filling this dead space. So this creates a rebreathing where we can have up to as much as one third of our exhaled gases. So the patient exhales and we fill that area with exhaled gas and then we re-inhale some of that exhaled gas. So up to a third of what we're inhaling could be what was just exhaled. So when we look at the actual oxygen concentration that's getting down to the lung, and you know, I think we think of room air as being 21%, but when you look at the actual oxygen concentration getting into the lung, it might be more like around 16%. We don't know for sure, but that's an estimate based on this rebreathing that occurs of our exhaled gases in the dead space up in the nasal pharynx. Okay, so let's take a look at the difference then between low flow and high flow oxygen and how it works with that dead space. So here we have a low flow on the left side and we have our FiO2 at 45%. We're having some air mixing that is occurring in that nasal pharynx. So we're not really getting that 45% all the way down into the lungs. However, when we look at the right side and we have a high flow... Having that higher flow, even though it's still at 45% mix, is going to lead to less air mixing and a higher delivery because we're blowing away that exhaled gas is sitting in that area of dead space. And now we're getting more oxygen down into the lungs. All right, well, remember that we just went through this period of COVID and COVID, we found, was associated with acute respiratory distress syndrome, ARDS. So this was one of the things that helped to bring high flow nasal cannula oxygen therapy to the forefront was being able to see all of these patients with ARDS who needed some higher level of oxygen support, but we didn't have enough ventilators or we didn't have enough traditional support for them. So we had to start looking at some of these other therapies. And what we found was that, yes, high flow nasal cannula was very effective in patients with ARDS. So in this study here, they were examining using a low-flow nasal cannula versus a high-flow nasal cannula in a hypoxic patient. What they found was that there was a decrease in intubation rates, okay, so a significant decrease at day 28. 51% of those in the low-flow nasal cannula group were intubated, whereas only 34% of those in the high-flow nasal cannula group ended up having to be intubated by day 28. In addition, mortality was significantly less in the high flow nasal cannula group as well by about half. So 16% mortality in the low flow nasal cannula group and only 8% in the high flow nasal cannula group. So not only did it decrease mortality, but it also helped to keep those patients from having to be intubated and ventilated. Here's the reference if you'd like to take a look at some of the data that was behind this video. Thank you for joining me for High Flow Nasal Cannula. My name is David Woodruff, and until next time, bye now.